Hello everybody and welcome back to Level Up Architects, the channel where we explore the world of architecture one architect at a time. In tonight's live stream we are going to look at um, a couple of projects by an architect named Raj Raval. But before I get into the uh, meat and bones of the video, I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, first of all, as you can probably hear, we have some music in the background, courtesy of YouTube Studio's free library of music. I hope everyone enjoys it. It's just something to um, make the stream a little bit more interesting and hopefully um, fill out the silence a little bit more. Yes. Um, the second thing I want to mention is um, the top five videos was a little bit restricting so I have decided to change it to uh, and call it a showcase instead. Sometimes I found that um, when I do find an architect that I really really like sometimes I find that they don't actually have five projects that I can showcase so I decided that the top fives is too restricting and that I would change it to um, to showcase, just call it, calling it Level Up Showcase instead. I hope everyone likes it. I might still keep the top five name in the, in the description or the label of the video, the name, but the thumbnails will say showcase from now on. And hopefully, yes, it'll open up some doors um, to creating more exciting videos for, for everyone to enjoy. Then the last bit of things that I need to, the last bit of housekeeping I need to do is if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell icon and it helps YouTube to notify you um, about when I do go live. So the bell icon is defi definitely useful. If you enjoy the video, please don't hesitate to hit that like button. It helps the channel out quite a lot. And finally, I have a couple of the side. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of social media accounts um, please go and follow me on social media whichever one you choose um, and you, you are on that will help me get the information out on the channel to you um, a lot easier so yes let's get into um, the video and talk about Raj Raval first of all if you have any questions about anything I covered today, um, please feel free to pop into the chat and ask. I will check out what's hap happened in chat at the end of the video and try and answer as many questions as I possibly can. The first thing I want to say is thank you to Unias. He actually suggested this architect to me in one of my previous videos and I really appreciate it because it's an architect I never knew about. So. In that regard, I love this suggestion because it broadens my own horizons, sorry, and it also helps me to spread information about uh, architects that might be well known to people in other countries, but definitely not well known necessarily around the world. So I like this. Thank you so much, Unias. I am very, very grateful. Um, and the same as Unias, if you do have a suggestion for an architect that you would like to see in one of my upcoming videos um, please feel free to pop that in the comments or in the live chat um, it will be much appreciated and maybe I'll do a video on your selected architect that would be great so let's hop into Raj Raval this is Raj Raval he is an Indian architect and he studied in London. He lived in Delhi and studied in London and he eventually worked in Paris for quite a, a well-known firm there and then came back to India and he um, started his own practice called Raj Raval Associates. He has been a lecturer at the School of Planning and Architecture um, and also he has done a series of guest lectures, lectures around the world. So he's quite um, an important architect especially in India and um, yeah I think he's had quite the impact um, in the architectural world with his works. So how I want to look at Raj Raval's works is Raj Raval actually um, breaks up his, his design ethic into five themes. The first being human habitat, second 
structure and light, and also spatial, spatial enclosures, materiality and craft, and sustainability. Those are his sort of five key components to his um, practice. And yes, I quickly want to go over each, each one of these points because I think that gives us a great way of um, measuring his work against his own, um, yeah, his own rules. Let's see how he, he fares against his own <laughs> set of rules. So human habitat, to me, it means he has a very deep understanding about the social constructs um, of the societies he um, places his work in. It also um, stems from an idea that a building is more than just a shelter and it can give dignity to the person living in that building and it can also uplift them in um, their lives. So human habitat is a very strong component of his architecture and you will see it, it definitely shines through. Structure and light. Um, he loves using structure as a way of filtering light into his buildings. He plays with the facades and sometimes he even wraps them into the building itself to become an interior facade and we'll see that as well. Um, and then spatial enclosures. Um, he loves creating courtyards by arranging his um, the masses of his buildings in a certain way to create these courtyards and um, pedestrian walkways. These courtyards and walkways create moments of flow and pause and also creates encounters with other people. I think it's the strongest thing he does is, is a combination of the, the spatial enclosures and human habitat. And then finally we, well not finally, we get to materiality and craft. I think he also has a very deep understanding of local culture and um, he uses materials that are often very honest and locally sourced, but he also uses this as an opportunity to imbue a lot of cultural meaning into his buildings. The final one is sustainability. I think it's fairly obvious. Um, he does attempt to root these buildings in place and create buildings that function properly and are properly ventilated and cooled without being overly um, engineered and um, how can I put it, without it being dependent on a lot of energy consumption. So yes, I think that in, in essence is um, the five themes that we will look at and measure his buildings by and hopefully we can give each building a rating out of five. I think that will be fun. <laughs> I won't be too harsh, okay? <laughs> I think this is supposed to be fun and beautiful. Let's quickly jump over to the first project. This is Anjali and Naresh Gur Gujral residence. I apologize, um, especially I apologize to Unias if I do mess up the pronunciation of some of the the words. Um, so this residence, let's see if we can understand how um, his idea of human habitat um, functions within this um, building. So he has a nice little slideshow for us to understand how um, the building works. Um, you will automatically, Im well, immediately almost see this idea of a courtyard that's at the very back there, which is his idea of spatial enclosure. You'll also see um, his idea of mater materiality and craft with what I would imagine is locally crafted bricks, as well as um, all the frames for the windows and the doors and the art. It's, it's all um, quite well chosen and well considered. Um, Here's a photo of that same courtyard, but just um, a little bit more lush after a bit of time. Um, I think it's quite beautiful and I think the little pool lends um, a lot to the cooling of the structure. So this will evaporate and create a much cooler environment in the house as a cross breeze goes through the house. Um, I think it's lovely. I, I'm a sucker for a courtyard. I love courtyards. 
in any shape or form, <laughs> just about. This um, is one of the, I think, back facades, I would imagine. But yes, again, it, it shows that idea of structure. Well, this shows quite well the idea of structure and light. You can see how he uses the floor slabs as a way of creating a deep eave to cast a bit of shadow onto the blazing to avoid direct sunlight and heat gain into the house. Um, so we've covered almost all of them except for, for sustainability. This is another example of these wonderful courtyards that Raj Raval really creates and I, I can't stress it enough. I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, yes, these courtyards are just amazing. Planted nicely. The sustainability, I think the sustainability can be much more subtle than what's considered green in today's day and age. I think the fact that he uses these deep eaves um, contributes to sustainability. The, the use of local materials, the way he chooses planting in the place. Maybe grass is not the best choice because grass requires a lot of water, but perhaps he has some sort of water collection um, system in place to ensure that the water can, well, the grass can be watered um, all season long. Um, that's again the, the courtyard, the structure, the light with the windows. Here you can see more of those, um, more of the windows in the interior spaces. So wrapping this project up, I think I give this a five out of five, simply because he's hit every point. Um, and I think there's a subtlety and a very considered um, design ethic at play in this house. And I think it's very, very beautiful. Um, let me think, let me know what you think about this project in the comments. Um, I appreciate it, but I love this house. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. The second project we are going to look at is the Sitco low cost housing project. Um, what can I say about this project? When I saw it first, this wasn't the first image I saw of this. Um, it, it was more than likely something. It was, I think, this image that I saw first. And I immediately fell in love with this housing scheme. I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, the way he creates interstitial courtyards, like you can see in these images, um, is breathtaking. And I think it allows for a lot of social interaction. So if you imagine um, all sorts of different types of families living here, it could be a single person, it could be a, a mother and a child, it could be a couple, however it is, these people would very obviously run into one another in these alleyways and courtyards, and it would facilitate discussions and probably facilitate a lot of um, security as well, because there, there are always people around. Um, eyes are very good security in densely populated places. Here you can see how he structures, well, places the, the volumes of his building around a central courtyard. But what you can also start seeing here is how he has developed sort of modules that can stack and arrange in different ways um, and plug into one another to create these spaces. And it's not just about the interior. So let's quickly go over the five points that Raj Raval gave us. Human, humane habitat, I think big, big check on that regard because it's this is low, in, in, low cost housing, so it's meant for people who can't really afford anything. I think this is very dignified and very uplifting and has a very strong understanding of the social constructs at play in, I believe, Delhi, India. So yes, structure and light. I think the way he breaks up the individual units creates for a lot of light um, in the habitable spaces inside as well. I think the courtyards become an extension of the interior spaces because a lot of people will, would live outward into the, into the courtyards. You can quite clearly see how people stack their plants on that little ledge and how people are congregating around certain points. I think it's lovely. So structure and light. I think the structure is very simple for a reason. It's to keep costs low. Um, 
So yes, that I think is also a check. Um, spatial enclosure, big, big, big check. <laughs> he, he, he does this very, very well in this, this scheme. Um, it ha has very clear ideas of pedestrian alleys, uh, walkways, and sort of moments of gathering um, in little courtyards all over the place, including rooftop terraces. So he he spares no he spares no space. All, all of the space is used. Um, if and and I think that's really wonderful. So materiality and craft. Um, you can see quite an austerity to this project where the materials are very humble and um, low cost. And I think that's very honest. He does try to embellish a little bit in places, but I don't think that's a bad thing in this case. I think it's very, very good. And then finally, um, sustainability. I think for the most part, he, he gets the sustainability check mark from me because um, you can quite clearly see the water tanks on top of the roof with sort of um, aerated brickwork around it. No, I, I'll give it a, a good full-on point because I think the places are well ventilated and well insulated most likely. He's clearly thought of water, he's, he's thought of light um, in the way that these buildings are structured. So yes, check mark. Another five out of five in my opinion for um, the Sitco housing um, project. It's, it's quite cool. This is the Hall of Nations and the Hall of Industries. Um, it, it was finished in 1972 and it's located in New Delhi. <laughs> he created a space frame out of concrete. In a previous episode, we, the, the episode on um, Shigeru Ban, we spoke about a space frame made out of cardboard tubes. Instead of that, we now have a space frame made of concrete columns and beams, um, which is very heavy <laughs> and very, very cool. But I think it's a very, he, he achieves quite a lot in this building and quite a span for a material that's a little bit restrictive, in my opinion. Um, humane habitat. I think this is uplifting in a different way. What these buildings were for back in the day when it was popular to do this sort of um, project was to entice other countries to invest in your country and also to show off what your industry can actually accomplish. So in, in that way, it uplifts the economy quite a lot. Um, structure and light. I think <laughs> he nailed that in this project. The structure is exactly that. It is made to filter and allow light into the structure inside. Um, and it is made to span quite a distance to create an internal space where an exhibition can take place. So yes, spatial enclosure. In this case, he doesn't do, um, create courtyards on the outside of the building, but rather on the inside of the building, which I, th I find very refreshing. Even though this is one of his earlier works, you can see that there are um, alleys and spaces to congregate and spaces to flow out um, and a large, large exhibition space in the middle um, with all of this um, light pouring in from the um, roof of the building. So I think it's lovely. Here you can see, oh well, he actually does create a courtyard and a spatial enclosure with the organization of the components of his building, which I think is great. Um, one of my viewers just told me that this building got demolished, which is very sad, but that quite often happens with these sort of World Fair buildings. They get built, they maybe stand for a couple of years and then they get taken down. So in terms of spatial enclosure, yes, um, Raj Raval gets this building quite right and he accomplishes creating internal spaces and walkways um, <laughs> to, to enforce his design aesthetic. Yes, then materiality and craft. Um, I think this was a big showcase of what they could accom accomplish in India, first of all, with concrete, a very humble um, material, 
and a very difficult material to work with sometimes because the shuttering is, is quite, quite tricky. And also, um, so the craftsmanship was, was sufficient to be able to accomplish this. And the materiality is, is very interesting in terms of the use of a very heavy structure to span such a great distance. So tick box there as well. Sustainability, I'm gonna give this project a pass on sustainability simply because this was built way before sustainability became an important thing. So I don't think I will minus a point from him on this project and I will also just give it a 5 out of 5 based on his own rules. Yes. This is the Nehru Memorial Pavilion. Hopefully this building is still in existence. <laughs> I, I think it's quite beautiful actually. Um, let me get, just get to the, the pictures so that, that everyone can understand what we're looking at. So most of the, the photos are internal spaces, but once you realize where these internal spaces are, you, you, you sort of get this immediate sense of, oh wow, it's such a nice hidden gem, because it's literally a hidden gem. It's sort of submerged into the ground. So this almost, I almost want to call it a ziggurat or a little a pyramid that's buried into the ground. Um, it's, it's, it's great. Um, it houses this, the, a memorial and it also facilitates a lot of interstitial spaces where people can sit and congregate and gather. In terms of his five um, points, humane habitat, I think Inherently, this is uplifting because it's a memorial. In terms of structure and light, oh my goodness, I think this is one of his most successful in terms of structure and light. The way he buries the building, but then still allows so much light into the space is beyond genius. It really is beyond genius. Spatial enclosure, I find very interesting on this project because you can see there is almost Exactly, this amphitheater-like space is one of those courtyards which he creates with one of the angles of the pyramid, if I can call it that. And you will see below the, the feet of the people there, there's a row of, um, I almost want to say glass bricks, or it looks like glass bricks at least. And you can see them here, and that allows so much extra light into the space. So, spatial enclosure, he does it in such a layered and fantastic way that I, I can't, yeah, I can't go on about this building. It's, it's wonderful. Materiality and craft, I think it's great. Um, it's another concrete building, so I think it's, it's a showcase of the craftsmanship at play in India. I think it's a wonderful display of the craftsmanship at hand. And here you can see how he even does the courtyards and spaces in the building itself as well as on top of it. So it's very layered, like I said. And then finally, sustainability. I love how the building is buried and creates for moments of plant growth on the, some of the terraces instead of having more seating. Um, yes, sustainability-wise, Especially when it comes to these types of buildings, I think it's a little bit more appropriate to use something like concrete and steel um, because it's supposed to last for a very, very, very long time. So, again, um, 5 out of 5. The last building I would like to showcase is um, the Lisbon is Maili Center in Portugal, which was completed in 2000. This to me is probably my favorite um, out of all of them. It's one where he really combines all of his um, themes into one absolutely superb building. Yes, let's start with Humane Habitat. Um, it's, a, it's a center, so in essence, I think it's also uplifting and dignifying to the community, especially the, the surrounding community, I think it, it gets a definite check mark on that front. Structure and light, I mean, <laughs> do I even have to say anything about that? 
It's so wonderful. How he creates those domes on top of that space frame is phenomenal. That um, curtain wall, which is made of, of concrete um, elements and a, a sort of an in internal sheet, sheet of glass is just beyond gorgeous. Um, it's so, so good. So in terms of structure and light, I don't think he's done anything more successful. If you know of a, a more successful project than this in terms of structure and light, please let me know because I, I find this to be genius, absolutely genius. So in terms of spatial enclosure, I think here's a good um, image to show um, how, he, he fun how he achieves that. He does create um, courtyards, whether they're internal, yeah, this is even better, whether they're internal or exter external, he creates um, spatial enclosure to, to like the maximum here. I know. Materiality and craft. This is where this building really, really shines in my opinion. The way he uses material and, and the craftsmanship in this building really imbues cultural um, value into the building. So this building is layered and layered and layered with cultural meaning. The patterns on the walls that he creates with structure, which is even more mind-bending if you think about it, that he not only uses materiality and craft to do it, but he also uses the structure to start showcasing this cultural, um, I don't know, cultural strength in the building. And then in terms of sustainability, I, I would imagine that this building is quite appropriate in terms of how it filters light into the building. Um, to avoid any unnecessary um, energy usage over time. So, to sum up, he pretty much nails all five of his points in this building, and I really think this is my personal favorite amongst the five that I have shown you today. Let's just quickly wrap things up. So, Thank you so much for watching. Um, before we finish the episode, I quickly want to remind everyone of, of Thankmas 2021, which will be happening on the 11th of December. I will be streaming live alongside thousands of other YouTube creators. Um, hopefully you can join us and um, we can all contribute towards uh, making a dent in the homelessness um, crisis around the, around the world. Yes. Please let me know what your thoughts were on these buildings in the comments down below. Um, what you, yeah, just let me know what you thought, if you enjoyed it or not. Um, and let me know what your favorite building was out of the five. If you have a suggestion for an architect that you would like to see in one of my upcoming videos, um, yes, pop that in the comments down below. Links to all of the um, projects and Raj Raval's website will be in the description of the video. Um, and please remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel, ring the bell so that you get notified when I do go live. Um, and also, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. It really helps the channel out quite a lot. Uh, it's important to know that even though if you miss the live broadcast, don't worry, I always upload the video later in the week, um, most likely on a Friday, so that you can watch it. It will be shorter because the live videos tend to be a little bit longer. So I shorten it down by editing it a little bit and then um, yes, I upload that on a Friday. I have social media, please follow me on your platform of choice so that I can keep you up to date with what's happening on the channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye!